Western New York, no stranger to movies being filmed here, and production companies are making sure Buffalo's talent gets a shot on the movie sets. David Aldovino shares how the Casting Buffalo Actors Expo is helping aspiring talent right here in our backyard. Good morning. Thanks for coming in, David. Good morning, Chris. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, good event. Tell us about it. Uh, first time, I believe, right? Yeah, this is the first event of its kind here, or really, th th this kind of thing just really isn't done a lot. So the, the uh, Casting Buffalo Actors Expo is an opportunity for actors at any experience level, whether they are beginners new to the industry or even our local seasoned pros, uh, to get the chance to really go behind the scenes and get to know the people that are making the decisions that lead to their casting. As actors, we're just kind of hired guns. You know, we, we show up on the day of filming, hit our marks, say our lines, and we don't really get a lot of insight into the weeks and months of work mm. that led up to that moment. So this is every actor opportunity to meet the people that they would be interacting with on local movie sets, commercial sets, uh, and a chance to help learn how to prep for auditions for local theater and film. Awesome. Well, who are some people we can expect to, to see or hear from then? You're going to see local casting directors like uh, Kyle Mecca, Harry Lipsitz, and Traz Johnson, who are the uh, fellas that run Casting Buffalo. You're going to meet mm -hmm. Darlene Pickering Hummert, who does a lot of casting for the local uh, films that are sometimes national films that are coming to film here and you'll meet uh, professional actors and acting teachers like uh, Josie DiVincenzo and uh, uh, professional headshot photographers. Mm -hmm. You'll have opportunities to get some professional pictures taken, hopefully to, at a nice discount. It's just a great opportunity to meet a lot of the people you'd be working with on film. We know how important those headshots are. Uh, when and where is this happening? Then? Uh, it's happening tomorrow from noon to 7 at the Atrium at Riches, so you can go online castingbuffalo.com and uh, get your tickets there. Awesome. So tell us your background in, in the industry. Yeah, well, uh, I was trained. Uh, I'm a trained, classically trained stage actor at Niagara University up in Niagara mm -hmm. Falls. I worked in professional theater for 10 years, and then I kind of got a big break in a national commercial campaign. Uh, and after that, I had to do the voiceover for the commercial as well as be on camera. And so from that point on, I uh, taught myself how to do voiceover and how to record from home. It's 15 years later, and I built Built a broadcast quality recording studio in my home, and if I can do it, anyone can do it. Well, we'll find out if that, if that's <laughs> actually true or not. What? So you, you you're gonna you could teach us something here. All right. So uh, I I asked you earlier if you had a favorite uh, maybe a favorite cartoon character or maybe that you that you would want to practice doing, and uh, you told me that it would be. I think we came up with Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. Right. That's right. Iconic character. So just to start out, just to sort of give us like a baseline, Chris, why don't you go ahead and just give me your very best. And what's up, Doc? Go yeah, for it. What's up, Doc? <laughs> yeah, all right, do, perfect. Do I pass? I, oh, can you clear that bar very well? So let's talk about Bugs Bunny's voice. There uh -huh. are three elements, or what I call vocal dimensions, that I want to talk about. Uh, the first is his accent. Mel Blanc, when he conceived of the character, he imagined Bugs Bunny as having an accent that's somewhere between Brooklyn and the Bronx. So Bugs Bunny <laughs> has an accent. Now, the second dimension to his voice is where do you place it in your own own voice. Some people speak from their chest, some people speak from the back of their throat, and some people speak from their nose. Bugs Bunny speaks from his nose. Nasally, so when you yeah. do his nasally, so when you do it, you want to visualize that that is the source of the sound. That's where it's coming from. And the third dimension to his voice is that it's pitched a little higher. It's pitched up higher than people normally talk. And uh, so you know, a higher pitch uh, denotes to an audience a little guy, a scrappy little guy that we want to root for. You know, we want to see him pull one over on the big tough guys. So those are the three vocal dimensions to his voice. So with those three things in mind, he's got the <laughs> accent, he's, it's, it's nasally, and he's pitching it up a little bit higher than your speaking voice. I want you to give it one All more right. try. Give me What's up, Doc? Yeah. What's up, Doc? Yeah, 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 better than the first awesome. one. Now, it's incredible all the things that go into it, though. Well, you know? and the great thing is, you know, now, was that a perfect impression? Maybe you can say not. No. But when you apply those principles of vocal dimensionality to your own unique voice and, and instrument, what you just did, you created your own unique mm. cartoon character. And the great thing, Chris, is that everyone's voice is different, so everyone can do it. Well, we all learned something here uh, today and tomorrow afternoon. There will be a lot more to learn out there. Riches uh, for this event. Thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot for having me, Chris. Mike